So out of nowhere, all of these life simulation games are just popping up. Honestly, the reason why I think this is happening is over the pandemic, cozy games really took over and not just cozy games, but general life simulation games. And I think a load of publishers really wanted a piece of the pie. And we're seeing this uprising of a ton of cozy games, whether that be the farming games, which are dupes of Stardew Valley, the Animal Crossing dupes. And now we're also getting the Sims dupes. And obviously video game development does take a few years, so they're only just starting to crop up now. But today I really wanted to look at all of them because we've got so much new information about all these upcoming live sim games over the last couple months. And there are a lot of similarities, but also a ton of differences between them all. Inzoi is at the top of my mind, at the top of a lot of other people's minds too. The first thing I want to mention about Inzoi is its character creator looks absolutely stunning. Even when I look at The Sims 4, like I know so many people who play it just so that they can create cool characters and pose them and take screenshots with them. I know a lot of people just love the aesthetic side of dressing people up. It's almost like one of those, you know, like those older Gogol games or whatever they were called. It's very reminiscent of that. And the character creator looks not only very detailed, but very diverse in that you could basically create anyone. And it's very, very realistic. It doesn't, I don't even want to say it looks like Sims 4 Alpha CC. It really does just look realistic and I think it's really cool. They've even showed off that you can actually use your camera and you can open your mouth and make facial expressions and then that transfers into your character in the game. It's very, very cool. Not just the character creator that looks incredibly detailed and in depth, but also the worlds themselves. It's obviously very, very realistic, very, very pretty. They've shown that you can change weather and seasons on the fly. Tons of different customization options, although the worlds will be set and you won't be able to create your own world. So it is very limited in that sense. As far as I'm aware to, you can't just create your own lots anywhere. You have to work within the boundaries of the lots that are already given to you, but you can of course furnish them internally however you like. The gameplay of Inzoi looks the most interesting. A really big standout for me is that you follow your character characters everywhere. So every single job, for example, is a live career. It seems like there's loads of fun activities for your Zoi. I think we're calling them Zoys, not Sims. There's loads of activities your Zoys can do, loads of social opportunities. And it seems like they're having a really big emphasis on socializing and the different kinds of dynamics in social relationships. They've also spoken about other random features like a reputation system, a karma system, and in fact, in the development cycle, they have actually made a lot of direct comparisons to The Sims. And it seems like they are looking at things that are present in The Sims 4 and just putting them in Inzoi. And although they haven't actually mentioned the DLC model for the game, I get the impression that a lot of the core gameplay will not be locked behind packs. And a lot of things that were used to being DLC in The Sims are actually just going to be in the base game of Inzoi. And I think it's going to be really exciting to see how it goes. I am very skeptical of how realistic it looks and I don't know how well it's going to perform. Hopefully the performance will be okay because I feel like life simulation games in general they require a lot of performance let alone with very hyper realistic graphics. I'm honestly not sure how I personally feel about the hyper realistic graphics. You guys let me know what you think. I personally prefer the more cartoony look but that's just me. I know a lot of people who do like the hyper realistic look but it definitely seems to be the most ambitious life sim game that I've seen. So I'm really excited to see how it develops in the future. Next up, we have Life by You. The biggest thing that they seem to be pushing with Life by You is customization. So it seems to be that the world itself is going to be fully customizable. You can place any lot, any size, anywhere you like. You can build anything anywhere. The game is set to come with population control where you can dictate what kind of townies spawn and exist in your world. This could be based on their gender, their sexuality, their ethnic background, tons of different things. I actually got to get an early access playthrough of Life by You and I uploaded a YouTube short on it. Something that I thought was cool when I did do that was it does have live careers. There are no rabbit holes in the game whatsoever. So you go everywhere and you do everything yourself. Something that I mentioned in my YouTube short 
bought was about the fact that if you go grocery shopping, you actually have to, like, if you want bread, you actually have to click on the bread stand. And then if you want meat, you have to go to the meat fridge. Like, it's very, very realistic in that sense. And again, it seems like a lot of things that we're used to seeing in packs in The Sims are just in the base game of Life by You. And honestly, I think we can all categorically say we're all so sick of The Sims' monetization system. So I'm all here for this. The only thing I will say I do strongly dislike about Life by You is the characters. I have been very honest before. Even though there is a lot of different character customization, I do think they're ugly. I think the graphics is very, very dark in general and very moody. And I personally feel like that's the one thing that's holding Life by You back, which is the graphics. I think if they made it a lot more cartoony, I feel like people would be a lot more open to it. That's the only major thing I am skeptical about with Life by You. Although one thing about the character creator that I did like is that when you create your own character, before you hop into the world, you give them a background story where you can dictate if they come from a wealthy background and they start off with a lot of money or they're from a poorer background with less money and you can give them background traits which affect how they interact with the world around them, which I think is really, really cool. I also think the modding opportunities available with Life by You look amazing. They've made it very clear that modding is at like the forefront of their mind when it comes to adding new features and making it so that players can easily just download their own mods that they want to download. And it's really easy and accessible for a lot of people. So I guess the whole point is it's Life by You personally, and you get to dictate how it goes. You guys let me know what you think about Life by You specifically. I personally think the gameplay looks great, but the graphics looks ugly. But I'm really excited to see how it develops in the future. Next up is Paralives. So Paralives is an indie developed game. So it's a little bit smaller. However, the amount of popularity this game has gained over the last few years is insane. It built up so much hype even before we had our first ever gameplay preview, which is just insane. Paralives definitely seems to be on the more simpler side, not in a very basic way, like a simpleton way, but more like a fresh, clean, cozy, relaxed vibes kind of way. It's personally my favorite upcoming one in terms of art style. It's been a little bit iffy. Some people love it, some people hate it. I personally love it. I like the more cartoony look of it and I like the sketched outlines, that kind of design. The build mode of Paralives looks really, really impressive. It looks like you can do basically anything, but we're going to have to wait and see. I definitely think the character creator is absolutely awesome. They've shown off a ton of different customization options that you can have, and they've showed off ways you can make a really diverse range of looking characters in the game. I'm really, really excited to see how that goes. Another really big thing they've mentioned about Paralives is that all DLC will be free. So once you've purchased the game, it's yours and you will never have to pay a penny to get any extra downloadable content. Again, that's something that I've always been a little bit skeptical about. Maybe maybe I've just got a bit of Stockholm Syndrome from The Sims because I'm used to having to pay so much money for DLC. But if they think it's going to be financially viable for them to continue making updates to the game for free, then you do what I mean. You crack on, you do that. I'm not complaining as a consumer. I'm interested to see where it goes. They have said that weather and seasons will will be in the base game for free as well as pets. They also said that horses will be in the base game for free, which is something I'm skeptical about. They've also mentioned houseboats will be in the base game for free, something as well I'm very skeptical about. But in general, I would say Paralives is the one that I'm most excited for right now, just because I think it looks like an absolute vibe. I think it seems to have a really good balance between back to basics, but also something that's really fresh and new. Next up, we have another indie title called Viva Land. So I actually got to play a build demo of this and it is free now on Steam. This is basically going to be an online multiplayer life simulation game where you live in a small town and you can live in your small town with a select number of people and you can build your own houses. It's got cooperative play and the whole gimmick of it is it's going to be, I guess, a generic life simulation game just like The Sims, but there's a really big emphasis on 
multiplayer. And I personally think that's really, really interesting. I'm very interested to see how it actually goes. Because of the small scale, it seems like it's a multiplayer thing. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever played in a Minecraft server with your friends, but I think I like the idea of just getting a small group of friends together and just living in a world together. They haven't really revealed that much about the gameplay other than that it's just going to be a life simulation game. I would personally like to see them make it so everybody can contribute something different to the town that you're in and that when you join the world maybe you have a choice of different roles that you could fulfill in the town and everybody has their own kind of speciality and that's how you can work together cooperatively. I think there's a lot of different aspects and avenues that they could go down with this but we don't know that much about it right now. I would say the built mode that I played with was fun. It was a little bit finicky to get used to but it was definitely really cool to play with and I actually really like the graphics. I think it's a perfect mix between realistic and cartoony. I think they've got it down really really well so I'm excited to see where that one goes to. And then of course we've got Project Renee. A lot of people keep referring to this as The Sims 5 myself included and I think we really need to stop because I don't think it's going to be The Sims 5. I have a feeling that it's going to be a cross between a main title Sims game and a spin-off like a cross between both. In terms of what we do know about it it will have all of the standard Sims things that you would expect from a main title Sims game. They've spoken about simulating life in I guess kind of like a city. They've emphasized a lot on apartments and having your own apartment and it seems very clear even this early on that there won't actually be houses in the game that it will just be apartments. They've also shown off a lot with build mode how you can really easily customize items. You could basically group loads of components together like for example putting cushions onto a sofa and then saving this group of items in a collection where you can upload it and then you can download other people things which I think is really cool. They've also mentioned that this one will have cross-platform play with mobile and they've suggested that the full game experience won't be on mobile. It will more be a case of maybe you could build furniture items on mobile and then import them into your game on PC. So they've made it quite clear that the main video game experience is unlikely to come to mobile, that it will more so just be like a side thing. They've also suggested that they want to emphasize on multiplayer with Project Renee, although they've kind of suggested that at this stage even they don't really know how they are going to implement it. So we don't know at this stage, but they've been relatively tightly sealed in terms of what's actually going to be coming in Project Renee. And we don't really know if it's going to be a full on multiplayer experience or if it's going to be primarily single player with multiplayer elements. They have rather interestingly said that they're going to continue making content for The Sims 4 whilst Project Project Renee is released, at least in early access. So that's going to be an interesting one. They've also said that they're going to switch up the pack system a little bit. It's still going to be cash grabby and microtransaction-y, obviously, because <laughs> it's EA. But they've already stated that seasons will be coming in the base game of Project Renee, but instead we will be upsold, for example, a winter pack or a summer pack and a spring pack and an autumn pack. So one, one season's pack is now four packs in Project Renee. So it seems a little a bit like a double-edged sword. I don't know how I feel about it, but one thing that The Sims always does right, always has done right, is build mode. Even The Sims 1, honestly, I think The Sims 1's build mode is even better than the build modes of a lot of modern life simulation games or any kind of game with building in it. Even The Sims 1 outperforms a lot of those. The Sims has always been great at build mode and building, and I definitely have no doubt that Project Renee is gonna end up being the best build simulator out of all of the upcoming ones. I'm so sure of it. But I don't trust EA. I feel like nobody trusts them to do a decent job. So I would say I'm probably the most skeptical about Project Renee out of all of them. Although I think it's great how transparent they're being because traditionally they've always been very secretive about Sims titles. But this specific one, they're not being secretive at all. They're being actually quite open. It also seems like they're gonna be giving us some older Sims 3 features back, for example, color wheels. So who knows, maybe Project Renee is just going to be a remake of The Sims 3. I sure hope so. Even if not all of these games go viral and get massive success, an indirect benefit, I think, from all 
of these games popping up for us as players is there's more drive now for them to be competitive with each other and get the best game because before it was only the sims and i feel like that's how they've gotten away with for example being a little bit cash grabby with their games and now it's not just the sims now we actually have a lot of other games by other developers whether directly or indirectly they're going to be a lot more competitive with each other because everybody wants to be the best and i think that's going to drive the life simulation gaming genre in a really positive step forward so even if you don't want to play any of these games the fact that they just simply exist in development is really great news for all of us you guys tell me which one you're the most excited for as i said before my personal one is just going to be paralyzed because i just like the vibe i'm all here for the vibes thank you very much for watching i will see you in the next one